Hello everybody. This video I kind of want to just uh, say that uh, after this I kind of want to take a break from talking about Star Wars and it's not that I hate Star Wars. Um, I obviously don't. I mean, I do talk about it quite a bit. Um, and while I'm not a hugely fond of the newest episodes that have been released by Disney, I do enjoy the uh, anthology films. Um, now maybe you agree with me on uh, the basis of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi aren't, uh, aren't very good or not good at all or whatever. Maybe you're mixed. Maybe you enjoy them. Whatever the case may be, uh, it's all good. You can have your opinion on the films. I can have mine. Maybe you also, if you're a fan of the new films, of the new episodes, maybe you don't like the anthology films. Maybe you don't like Rogue One. You don't like Solo. It's all fine. Just get that out of the way. Also, uh, yesterday was Clint Eastwood's birthday. So happy birthday to him. Though I don't believe he'll ever watch uh, this. He turned 88, so... Great actor, great filmmaker. Not really Star Wars really, but hey, it's movie related, so... I think it fits this series, really. Um, anyway... The topic I want to talk about is essentially the fatigue of Star Wars. Um, people seem tired of it. Um, in, and what I mean by that is uh, the newest film, Solo, is not doing very well. Um, I watched some people who talk about box office or just films in general. And if they were talking about Star Wars, so they mentioned the box office a lot. As well as some of the production stuff that we've heard. About the film beforehand. And, um... Yeah, uh, some... Uh, uh, it's not doing well. And I think it's a good film. Um, I would say to go and watch it, but again... That's just my opinion. That's my view. Maybe you don't want to see it. Maybe you've you have no interest. You know, I do know nobody wanted a Han Solo film. I think we can agree with that. Nobody really wanted this movie. But we got it. With that said, um, I think uh, the a big reason for the low box office of Solo is due to The Last Jedi. Many people dislike that film. There are many people who dislike The Force Awakens, but, you know, they gave The Last Jedi a chance, and they're like, you know, I wasn't very fond of that film, but maybe the this next movie will be better, and it'll try and explain things. It didn't really explain a lot of anything. It continued to ask more questions than it answered, and, um, uh, many people got annoyed, and the answers it did answer from The Force Awakens weren't very, it was like, well, really, that's, that's what it is, that's what you're gonna answer? <laughs> For instance, Ray's parentage, she got over that in The Force Awakens, but that has to be a big focus in the, in the last Jedi what am I what do you what do I mean by she got over it well when Maz Kanata was talking to her she basically saying oh you like she, well, she keeps saying she wants to go back to Jakku and she says you want to go like you want to go back to basically you know wait for someone some people uh, the people but you know that they're never coming back. They're never coming back to get you, and you 
Let's just see the look on her face that she accepts that. All right. They'll never come back. I waited for so long. And me wanting to go back is essentially pointless because I'm away from that planet. And I can start a new life. I can do, you know, something else. Whatever that is, I don't know. But I can do something now. One reason that the people... Or one reason that was brought up back was because fans wondered who her parents were. Mainly because she has the Force out of nowhere. She didn't really begin to believe the Force. Or she didn't really seem to believe in the Force, I guess. Like, she didn't seem to either hear about it or believe it. Um, I have often... Uh, Thought of the latter, like she might have been told stories, but by people. Because Luke Skywalker is a legend. Just a fairy tale thing that became like a legendary status sort. Um, like a legendary story, essentially. That's why he was a legend. Didn't really exist, but just a nice story to tell everybody. Help take the Empire down was a Jedi. These were the Jedi. They could use the Force. And the Force was like this. Um, it's just, but yeah, it's like uh, this doesn't seem very uh, exactly believable, but people wondered who her parents were. Like, uh, is she Luke's daughter? Is she Palpatine's daughter? Is she insert character here's daughter or, or some new character we've never heard of but uh, you know while that uh, question was essentially wrapped up of her not really essentially caring about her who her parents were because fans were making theories about that you know last Jedi they brought that back and her parents were nobody now you might wonder why I'm bringing all this up. It's because of Star Wars fatigue, as I mentioned earlier. People are seem to be tired of these films. Um, they're not special anymore. In that, uh, even though there was a three-year like uh, gap between the moment. Lucasfilm was bought by Disney and The Force Awakens came out. You know, there's three years. But it seems as if in those three years they just didn't seem to care a whole lot about what they were making. Um, throughout George Lucas's story treatments, um, he was working with a writer to help develop a story, flesh out his treatments. Some of his ideas initially, that he initially had may have stayed, some gone completely. But he was going to be working with them, and eventually we found, uh, no. Just throw that, those ideas away, and just do new stuff, and essentially reboot Star Wars without saying we're rebooting Star Wars. Until you go and watch the film. And there you go. Um, and it's that kind of thing that also, um, you know, Force Awakens was huge, hugely successful, obviously. It's the first Star Wars film in 10 years. It's going to be huge. Rogue One, first anthology film. You know, it's not a continuation of the main story, so understandably, it's not going to make as much money as the episode films. But then episode 7 comes out making more money than Rogue One, but not as much as, you know, The Force Awakens made. And, uh, there seemed to be a good deal of excitement, as well as people not really uh, that weren't all that excited, but hey, you know, Give it a chance. And 
the, the quality just didn't really improve. If anything, it just worsened um, from the perspective of many, including me. But again, if you enjoyed those films, great, good for you. They just weren't my cup of tea. Solo comes out five months later, and it's not doing well. It's doing pretty bad for a Star Wars film, honestly. It should be, honestly, because of its name, the Star Wars name, you would think it was, it would be making millions by the truckloads, but no. It, it is sad. Um, the fatigue, you know, it's really good. To, I had a feeling it was always it was gonna kick in at some point, um, because as fans got more and more disappointed with the franchise, or at least the story of the main episodes are going, I had a feeling this was going to happen, um, and it has. One reason it has is because they're just cranking up movies every single year. Star Wars was a special thing. When George Lucas had it, it came out every three years. Um, and, it, and there was anticipation between each film. People loved those movies. and It was exciting when the new Star Wars would come out. Now it's every year and it's getting tired and... Meh. People aren't that excited anymore. And yeah, it's just, it's it is sad, but this is what happens when people in charge don't really care about the franchise. They just want to make movies break them out as fast as possible. Some people say there's p political and social context in there, which I can see. I can see where people will think that. You know. <clears throat> Sorry. Kind of a bit of a cold or whatever, so apologize for all this sniffling and such. But anyway, you know, it's it's sad that this is happening with Star Wars. And The Last Jedi, for so many, was the last draw. I myself even thought, this is really the first time. I don't care if I see Star Wars ever again. I don't care if I see a new Star Wars movie again. Essentially, is what I'm talking about. With The Force Awakens, I was disappointed, but I had hope for the next installment. The next installment to be better. And it was worse, and that's just what... Uh, any small little hope that I had, which... It's essentially really for me, I guess, non it was non existent. Ever since Disney bought it, I had really no high expectations. Um, I just really didn't. Uh, I did hope that they would be entertaining. That was like the only expectation I had, but so many people said, Oh, it's going to be better than whatever George Lucas could have come up with. This and that. It was a prequel. Blah, blah, blah. As, as, as I've said before, I love the prequels. If you don't love the prequels, fine. You don't have to. Maybe you don't even enjoy them. On any kind of level. But George Lucas expanded the original trilogy. He expanded upon them. He made three movies where the story actually did connect with the original trilogy. For better or worse, whether you like the execution or not, that's true. Um, I would like to say we could all agree on that, but, you know, there's going to be some that won't. Either because they're stubborn and will refuse, or they just don't 
care. Um, uh, and some like say all oh, this whole reboot thing. Oh, had to do that because of the prequels. No, you didn't have to do that. You could have created an entirely new story. And in saying, like, oh, it could be better than George, what George Lucas would make, well, if you wanted to really try and prove that point, take some of the old sources, like from the books and such, and use those as inspirations. Don't just decanonize and say, that never happened, and then now cherry pick what you want in the now new expanded universe and uh, even the new stuff or even the old stuff that we do bring back to kind of make it suck like I like Thrawn I believe is back into the canon and he's no longer amazing like he was he's no longer cool and Things like that, things like with the movies, Star Wars fatigue was going to happen. It was going to kick in. I had a feeling it was going to happen. I didn't really vocalize it because I'm like, a whole lot like, well, at least not on this channel. Because I'm like, people are just going to see. And, uh, whether one would have believed me or not back in end of 2015, 2016. Well, whatever, all right. But it's been a few years since then, and look where we are. Uh, a dude, as he reviews, uh, I mentioned him a, an episode or so ago of a series. He made a video like that about this kind of thing of Star Wars, the solo box office, and... He makes good points, but I don't kind of entirely agree with him on a certain thing in that, you know, he says they shouldn't have Star Wars every year, which I agree with. He said Star Wars should maybe every two years because people have small, they don't have as much of an attention span anymore, which is true. But I think, um, I personally think you could still do the three-year gap between films. <laughs> As long as they build up hype, they get quality people in charge, have quality stories for episodes and anthologies, get the best people involved, you let them do their thing, don't try and interject your own personal ideologies, political stuff, whatever, that so many people have pointed out and various, vigorously, uh, discussed in their own videos on the matter. Yeah. I've never made a video on that because, like, so many people have already done it a lot better than me, so what do I have? I can't really offer anything new. Um, at least I don't believe I can. I can't think of anything new. So, there you go. But, just get the best directors, best people possible, doesn't matter how many gaps of between years, uh, Star Wars will be. You know, I believe get the right people together. You have the right amount of hype. People go in droves to see the new Star Wars film, the new episode, the new anthology Star Wars film. People would go, and hopefully people would enjoy them. Because now, every single year, they're just pfft, getting tired. Someone like me, yeah, I'll go and watch them. Because I love Star Wars. I'm gonna, I will. If they're bad, I'll say that the, the film is bad. If it's good, I'll say it's good. But the special, what made Star Wars special, I think I've often said this and I still believe it. It went away when George Lucas 
was no longer involved. They threw out all of his ideas and then they essentially booted him away from even being a creative consultant. Which was what he was supposed to be doing. As well as uh, having his stories and his treatments be made into the new episode 7, 8, and 9. And maybe he would have made more. Because there was originally the idea for like 12. Because you know, Star Wars is supposed to be a space opera serial uh, franchise. Like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon. Melodramatic acting and dialogue and so on. And themes and of what we've all, of what everyone knows in society, and themes and stuff that of like the human adventure people people love, and it's that's absent without George Lucas. I firmly believe that. I often have believed that, especially ever since I saw The Force Awakens and I saw the decline of Star Wars, uh, the episodes at least, and it was... <sighs> Though George Lucas, the heart and soul of Star Wars, isn't there. Star Wars fatigue kicks in. Should have had it. Now, SC Review did say, like, if you have a two-year thing, you know, be enough for people. I can actually see that. I see where he's coming from with that, but Again, I think if there was was still a three year gap, have enough hype, have uh, the right people involved, it'd be fine. You know, look at Batman. Look at the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, there's a three year gap between Batman Begins and the Dark Knight, and in between those films, Nolan made The Prestige. Which had Christian Bale and Michael Caine. Between The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, that was a four year gap. And in between that, there was Inception, which starred Killian Murphy, um, Tom Hardy, Joseph Gordon Levin, Marion Cotillard. All three of those, or all, oh, and Michael Caine, so about three or four, but, but all those people. All those actors were in The Dark Knight Rises, plus Christian Bale, who was in the, the previous Batman films, and The Prestige. So no one seems to carry on these people, and there was enough of a gap that I guess today's audience, even though it wasn't all that long ago, uh, The Dark Knight Rises will be six years old this year. And that's just like, I mean, I don't exactly, I think if you have the right people involved, people will get excited. People will be hyped. I mean, Nolan kind of has that power, what, I guess you could say what Star Wars used to be. Any new Nolan film, people get excited. People were excited with Interstellar, um, which I loved. I know not everybody loves that film. Or enjoys that film, but I enjoyed it. I loved it. I thought it was a great movie. I thought it was an interesting film. And then with Dunkirk, three years later, uh, you know, uh, same kind of buzz and excitement. And it just depends on who, if you get the right people. Great with though with Warner Brothers. No one has free reign. He gets to do what he wants. With Lucasfilm, have the directors do what they want. Have directors make the versions of of the films of the continuation of the series and the story, as well as the anthologies, the expansion of the universe. Let them do what they want. Let the directors make their own stuff. Let the writers have good free reign. Don't have people who just will just do whatever and either not try and talk uh, 
the people up at the studios, I don't like this idea, you know, because they don't kind of do that, really. J.J. Abrams, um, <laughs> he doesn't seem to. Um, and Ryan Johnson, he didn't really seem to. He just went along with whatever. That was fine with him. And, uh, I don't really have a whole lot of high hopes for Episode 9. I hope it's good. hope it's entertaining, but I'm not sure exactly uh, if 9 can save this new trilogy. This episodic trilogy. I don't know if it can. If it can, great. But J.J. Abrams has this track record of not being able to finish anything. Not giving a good conclusive ending to things. With the uh, Force Awakens, there wasn't a... It was left on a cliffhanger. Something that Star Wars film has never done before. I mean, yeah, they can have a conclusion where it makes you excited for the next film, but it's not exactly a cliffhanger. Even Empire Strikes Back. Okay, well, you know there's going to be more. You know it's ending on... There needs to be a revelation, but it wasn't like a cliffhanger of sorts, where it picks up exactly where we left off last time. That's what happened with Episode 7, and then Episode 8, it did that. It began and were left off. It doesn't exactly work with Star Wars. It's supposed to be like a new thing, yet it also addresses and continues the story. It addresses things from the previous films, but okay, we're already doing something new here. Here we go. What made Star Wars special? What made them uh, event films? I feel that that, uh, that went away when George Lucas was essentially booted out of being involved at all. That's sad. But that's where we're at. That's where we are at. Star Wars fatigue is real. It's been kicking in. People boycotted Solo. Even though I think it's a good film and other people think it's a good film. It's entertaining. But I didn't exactly believe this boycott because you hear so many people, you're going to boycott this, you're going to boycott that, and then hardly anybody really seems to do so. At least regarding movies. And those that do, there's not enough, so no real effect has been made. No changes will be be at least considered to be made. So, But it seems as if with The Last Jedi, it's the disappointment that film had. It seems as if it's... The boycott's real, so... And I enjoyed the film. I would like people to go and watch it, but I understand why people aren't lining up droves at the local movie theater, so. Anyway, um, <clears throat> that's really all I have to say. I could continue on and on, but my nose stopped up, and all that you don't want to get probably hear me continue on like this. And also, I kind of had uh, things to say at this moment. Um, again, I want to take a break from Star Wars, or at least from talking about Star Wars. Um, I have some movies I've seen that I want to talk to talk about, so... Stay tuned for uh, non-Star Wars related videos. Um, I hope you'll enjoy those just as much. Um, but, uh, yeah. And uh, I just hope you all have a good day. Hope you have been having a good day and will continue to have one. <laughs> And, um, I want to, uh, 
Yeah, I just want to talk about other stuff. Hope you'll enjoy that. And uh, see you all next time. Peace out.